Okay, I'm back with what is not part two, but the journal written right after the previous one. So it's also from 831, the Mayan day still 10 read. It's got a good link that I hope you'll click over to check it out. And I'm doing something I haven't done before here. I'm starting this one with a quote. It's from Joseph Chilton Pierce. Many of you will have uh, heard about. And I've got a link with the quote to where it's from. It's about the heart. And uh, it picks up in the middle of a sentence. It says, about 60 to 65 percent of all the cells in the heart are neural cells which are precisely the same as in the brain, functioning in precisely the same way, monitoring and maintaining control of the entire mind, brain, body, physical process, as well as direct unmediated connections between the heart and the emotional, cognitive structures of the brain. Secondly, the heart is the major endocrine glandular structure of the body. I didn't know that. Which Roger found to be producing the hormones that profoundly affect the operations of the body, brain, and mind. The heart, mind you. Thirdly, the heart produces two and a half watts of electrical energy at each pulsation creating an electromagnetic field identical to the electromagnetic field around the Earth. How does it feel to be a mini-Earth? The electromagnetic field of the heart surrounds the body from a distance of, are you ready? 12 to 25 feet outward and encompasses power waves such as radio and light waves which comprise the principal source of information upon which the body and brain build our neural conception and perception of the world itself." Close quote. Joseph Chilton Pierce. He's written some good stuff. Can't call it to mind what the titles are right now. Okay, here's my journal. Well, it appears some sort of dam may have burst whatever was holding back the journals. Here goes yet another one. Following a, long, a time of long absences, there is something simple but profound that I want to share with you. When you center in heart, you can actually read and view videos and such from there. Now, I expect you already knew this that going to heart is not just for meditation or quiet time, but maybe some didn't. So, here goes. When you center in heart and then take up something to read, heart will give you clear indication of the quality or worth of what you are reading. It will do this by making it either easier or harder to stay centered with your reading material. Material that is either light-filled or relevant for your now here is of light and, and it just makes it easier to stay centered. You will find that viewing material that is on point for you supports your heart focus, making it easier and easier to stay heart-centered. And conversely, some things will simply drive you out of heart focus. They don't resonate with heart, or the angle they're coming from doesn't. I hope that more and more of us are choosing to use free will choice to limit or control our viewing and reading material. Many have already dispensed with television and radio entirely, and not that this is required. Just using it as an example of the soul choosing its path, moving toward increased purity. And you know, not everyone is called to do that. And for some people's life path, 
they need to be involved with media and so on. So this is truly no judgment on anyone or anything. So I suggest this ability of the reading and viewing material to either encourage or discourage heart focus it as one criteria to help you make your viewing choices. It's a fascinating property of heart and of the physical heart too so that it's very connected and intertwined with all that is. We are learning a new way to read life, my friends. When we take up heart center as a regular or frequent focus, we have far more senses than the five of the body-mind available to us. It is thus we extend the invitation to higher self, to source, to enter in and abide now here, where we are. By vacating mind in favor of heart, we present the sufficiently empty cup. Do you see? Now, there's different ways to use that term, the empty cup. This is just one of them. In the attached link, you will both read and view a couple of videos. I found this material quite supportive of heart focus as I went through it. I offer it to you to use as a test of your own ability to center and to note whether it is easier or not to stay centered while you peruse what is there. This is a part of the new subtle tuning in that many of us are doing, perhaps largely unconsciously. It is our great joy to come into conscious awareness of what we are doing already, as well as laying out a conscious welcome mat for the presence of the One, of Source right where we are in our daily activities. Such activity is also a prayer of sorts. It is a use of our free will that invites more of the light that we are into our presence. It is, in effect, a call on that light just to center in heart. As such, it can be a great help in our reprogramming of mind to take a back seat to heart. Okay, this one is short and sweet, I hope. Remember, in order to fully partake of this journal, you need to click the link over to the written one and then be heart-centered as you view the material. I'll be interested in any comments you'd care to make. Namaste.